VIP access. VIP access with Aniko on Africa Loud. The superstar on my podcast this week needs no introduction. This is the first introduction that I'm saying the guest does not need any introduction because he's a certified superstar. <laughs> the lion of Suda. Ben Sol Monyo Yuko Hafa. Thank you so much for having Yo. me. Aniko. Uh, any, trust me, you're one of the people who have seen the whole transition from Ben Sol Monyako and Julikana to Ben Sol Monyako. That's a superstar. Yes. The oh my God. And I'm so proud of <laughs> you for you that. Thank you so much. Like, hey, where do we start? Where do we start? Where do we start? <laughs> hey, you've seen me in like the craziest in the of trenches. places. In the trenches. In the trenches. <laughs> in the trenches. So I always like to paint a picture for those who are listening. I'm for those who are watching. Yeah. And they don't know who the person I'm sitting down here with is. So Ben So is an amazing Kenyan creative superstar artist, multi-talented period. You know, it's not one thing Ben Soul does, but many things. He's actually one of the most talented um, instrumentalists and writers that I've had the pleasure to be exposed to. Ben Soul plays like 10 instruments. Yeah, right can, now. Can, can we list them to them? Uh, <laughs> I, I can play drums. I can play piano, all the keys. I uh, can play all the guitars, bass, acoustic, electric. Uh, I can play the, the double bass, uh, violin. I started learning the sax, all the percussions, recorder. Vibes, vibes, do you see? I, I dare <laughs> you guys to show me a more talented and versatile creative. Like you are so Thank you talented. So Thank you so much. How, how did you get to learn how to play all these instruments? Like you are not 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I always say I'm, I'm a very adventurous kind of person. Uh, so whenever I meet up with any instrument, I'm trying to learn it. Uh, right now I'm learning how to produce. I've been like producing, even on the album, I produced uh, like a bunch of songs on it and recorded every vocal by myself, played a lot of instruments on it. Mm. So I never stop learning. Every single time is a learning, learning opportunity for me. Mm. Uh, right now I'm learning how to be like an amazing sound engineer for that, so that I can be able to like I manage my sound designs on the, on the songs, on everything, any project that I'm going to put out after this album. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I mean to learn an introduction as I continue. <laughs> Ben Soul is also one of the biggest um, pop stars, music stars from this side of the continent. You know, he's written not just amazing hit songs, you know, for himself, but for so many other artists, yeah. including Saudi Soul, Burner Boy. Burner Boy. Um, Grammy Long Award Street. winning songwriter. Right? right? Yeah. <laughs> Grammy Award, Award uh, winning songwriter. Yeah, but let's I've, talk about that. I've written for so many guys uh, because way back when I was starting up, uh, I didn't actually want to become a musician. Uh, I actually wanted to become like a record producer and a songwriter. So I used to write songs for guys like Akina Kidum. Uh, I've written songs for guys who had the band. Uh, and then I was also like part of the songwriting team for Saudi Soul. Uh, that's how I ended up writing for Banner Boy. I've written a lot of songs. These are even gospel songs for artists like Akina Saizate. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a song I also gave Masi Masika. I'm hoping she's gonna put it out. Uh, there's a, uh, on Sedo's album, uh, there's a song I wrote with Nashinsky, uh, so I'm hoping uh, it gets better and better every single time. I'm, wow. I'm actually planning to, to start even writing for like international artists. There's a friend of mine called Trezo, big shout out to, to, to Trezo. Uh, he's written for Drake. And yeah. he inspired me a lot. Like, that's really possible coming from, from an African child. Yeah. So it's really yeah. possible. And yeah. the craziest thing, because Trezo is also my friend, he was like, Drake's team reached out. Imagine. Imagine. They were like, we and, like you. And, and, and he likes him so much that every single project that Drake does right now, Trezo is involved. Yeah. Big, big yeah. man. Mad. <laughs> Mad. No, but how is it like, you know, winning a Grammy and getting that, you know, recognition, global, international recognition for your work? Did you ever think like, because you said, I, I didn't even want to be a musician singing. Yeah. I loved writing music. But did you ever think, Utafika, your level, Paka, you're writing for global stars like Burnable and getting Yo. a Grammy recognition? Yo, like, 
everything happened so magically and I, what I would say is most of it has been God's plan. Uh, like that Banner Boy song, it was meant to be on, on Saudi Soul's album, ended up in Banner Boy's album and voila, we were Grammy. Kidana, Kapata, Grammy. Oh, and that, just that title being a Grammy Award winning songwriter has taken me to different amazing places and of course. the way people respect me after that when it's so beautiful and ni kama watu sijui wanangojanga yani watu waone uwekelewe medal ndio waanze kuko respect yeah yeah but i thank god uh for every single endeavor and it may happen mm. i wouldn't say it's something that i was planning to be here at this point right now uh i would say it's god's plan yeah yeah and he keeps on blessing me because i keep on working on myself and making myself available for su- for such opportunity yeah. yeah and and talking about god's plan and the the place where you're at right now we are celebrating you for the release of your debut album Thank you so the much. lion of suda <laughs> why that title i think people know when they hear your songs they hear you say suda yeah. quelly, quelly, quelly. <laughs> actually but most of the guys they thought i'm trying to be uh, blasphemous with the title. You I know, would never not, think that. And because, for, for me, you're a king and a lion and <laughs> any other animal and creature you want to call yourself, you deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Most of them are thinking, oh, I'm trying to compare myself to the lion of Judah. Oh. Of which they consider Some, People Jesus sometimes want to think too yeah. much into these things. <laughs> but uh, the name Suda came by, by like a nickname from my friends at had the band. Hmm. Uh, they used to call me Ben Suda after like he said, Hig. <laughs> they used to call me Ben Suda. And then when I started now producing, I was looking for a producer tag that can be very uh, different and can uh, that can't affect the music. Also, you know, some some producer tags in Okwanga crazy that Lazima Zina Zina vibe their songs. Yes. So I discovered that Suda sounds really nice. Yes. And I started using it on every single song. So when I was thinking of uh, an album title, uh, the reason why I called myself the Lion of Suda is because uh, as a lion. Uh, the lion cubs, they usually, male cubs, they usually chased away so, so that they can uh, fend for themselves and create their own pride. So I feel like right now, I've gathered a lot. I've, be- I've learned a lot. Right now, I feel like I'm, I'm coming back as a lion. I'm coming out as a lion, uh, ready to rule my own nation, the, the Suda nation, the pride of Suda. Wow. You know, yeah. Wow, there's such a beautiful meaning Thank to, so to the title of the album. It's just Thank not so a much. title. It's just not a title. But you're such sure. a songwriter. It's an awakening. It's such a it's a it's a it's an expression of a new level in Ben Soul. Mm. Yeah. Because you started as a cub. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And your 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 mothers, the lionesses yeah. were hunting for you. Yeah. Sometimes a lion would come and share something with you. Yeah. But you've done your journey to now, a certain level. I, I've learned to look for myself and take care of other people. You know, I'm a father right now. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, yes. And you're brave enough to be out here by yourself. For sure. To watch your own back. Yeah. I love it. What a deep meaning. Thank you so for much. For the title of this album. Thank you so much. So how does it feel to be the Lion of Suda, you know? Uh, it's a beautiful feeling. Uh, and then also, it's scary sometimes. But if something that doesn't scare you, you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. So it's a level where I'm ready to take care and be independent. I run my own things, I uh, run my own company, The Lion of Suda, and be that great musician that Kenya, Kenya needs at this time, you know, mm. uh, be a legacy to my generation. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And talking of generation, I think everybody got to know you from the time you got signed to Soul Generation. Yes, yes, yes. yes I yes, also yes. got to know you then, and yes. I think it was around 2019. That's when your debut single came out. Yeah. And from there onwards, it's just been an upward trajectory. Yeah, you actually did the PR for <laughs> for, for most of our singles. The, yes. the first, first ones. The first so you're, ones. you're actually one of the reasons why we blew up big because you did such an amazing job in terms of selling us out there. And it was so it was such a scary time. I don't know if you remember. <coughs> because, you know, just like first single, first video. Yo. Oh, yo, you, know, you know, I remember and that. Every, that everybody yeah. put everything. I remember Trust. even Chimano was like, hey. Even Bielo was so scared. You know, the first time. I was also scared. Yeah, you know, I just can't come to you and say, I'm scared. But. <laughs> yo, the first day we had like only 2,000, 2, 2, 2K views on Lucy. And guys were like, uh, we actually thought we are going to get like more views from that. And then every, pole pole too, we started growing and started getting better. 
And look at us right now. Man. Look any, at us right day, now. Not at least, like, the growth has been very organic. Yes. And people are loving the music and loving who we are as persons. And they have seen the personality. They know exactly who they're dealing with right mm. now. And you guys did a good job. Asante, Asante. And you have done yeah. such a great job with yourself as well. Thank you so what, much. What yeah. do you think was the, the, the breakthrough for you? Because when we started, it was a good start, but yeah. it wasn't the breakthrough. Yeah. When did you feel like, wow, people understand me. The, the fans are now fans of yeah. Ben Soul. Because before, they were fans of you via other songs you had been part of. Yeah. But you had to take your time to build your own brand. For sure. You know, to write your own songs, to perform your own concerts. Quilly, what quilly, was the be breakthrough? I feel like it's been a steady growth. Uh, I didn't get like that first hit song. What? Yeah. And then I'm, I'm struggling to get another hit song. Yeah. I feel like by the time we were getting to Nairobi, after Nairobi Litoka, that's when, that was that, that, that's when the whole nation understood that, yeah. hey, there's yeah. this guy who's, who writes these yeah. amazing songs, crazy songs, uh, very well-written music. Yeah. And most of the people started discover, discovering me, actually, after Nairobi. And Nairobi blew up all the other songs that were, were, had come out before, be, before then. Mm. Yeah. And I also feel like Nairobi was an unexpected hit, yeah. but, but expected for you. Like, yeah. it's your typical song, but it's not a typical hit record. Yeah. But it did so well, and I and felt like it, it was a show that the, the, the industry and um, the fans understand yeah. this type of songwriter you're not yeah. an ordinary songwriter i wasn't writing for just an ordinary song i was writing to poke people's uh feelings and they got it <laughs> yeah and they understood it yeah, yeah, yeah. there was even a challenge oh it was amazing and very organic i didn't even like started guys just started doing it like God's grace. And it's going on until yeah. now. I saw Paul bashing Yo, the Tanzanian yeah, artist. Mboso. <laughs> Mboso, Mboso. Yeah, Mboso did he, the same thing. Uh, Akachukua concept uh, your video. Was inspiring people since 1993. <laughs> 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 yeah. What yeah, do you and, have to say to that? Uh, I, was, I was actually happy to see it because it means that we're being seen. We're visible. They can see it and they can feel it and it's inspiring their work. So yeah. it means that... Uh, the music is getting to them in so that's many ways amazing. and that's beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And no, looking back at your time with Soul Generation, um, you know, it's it's a lot that has been happening at Soul Generation. There's an entire family yeah. you've made there, you know, from an South to Soul, Any, to whoa, your whoa, team, whoa, whoa. your stylist, yeah. your management, <laughs> your tour managers and I don't know, like people who shoot your content and videos. It's been a, it's been a big family that you've yeah. accumulated over the years. Um, what have been the biggest lessons you've learned while at Soul Generation? Uh, while at Soul Generation, uh, the biggest lesson I've learned is uh, you can have a team around you, but if you yourself, you're not like putting a lot of effort on yourself and being great at who you are, the team is useless. Yeah, hundred percent. Because Babu, a being in Soldier has taught us to, like, to really work for ourselves in a in a, in a certain way. Like, uh, I write my own songs, uh, I produce them, and then I leave it. I leave the work now to the to the team now to sell a good a, a good product. But the product, first of all, is what I've worked on. Yes. So, uh, in Soldier. We, 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 have, we have taught ourselves to be very uh, independent and also dependent on each other, the family kind of unit. Mm. And it's such a beautiful space to be at. Uh, I've learned so much from Akina BN. Mm. Those guys have, have years and years of knowledge, first of all, and also like experience. The most experiences that they have had in the Tunazi experience, Saizi, Pemimin, and Viri. And it's so beautiful having somebody who can guide you and tell you. Uh, this is where you're supposed to do, but also do you, you know? Yes. Be yourself, and but this is what I did on my own, and you can do this and be great. At yeah. It. And it, it works. And then also, uh, I've also learned that uh, way back I used to write like all the songs by myself, uh, but now I've learned to be very open. We sit down with BN, uh, I sit down with Akina Savara, Polycap, Chimano, most of the times, uh, and we end up coming up with amazing hits that I never thought that they could come from my, my, my mind. And there's a power in writing together that you inspire each other, show each other different perspectives, 
And that's how you end up coming up with these amazing, these beautiful songs. Because we always say that we're writing songs for so many people. Why write it alone? Yeah. Yeah. I always felt, especially when you and BN are together, like I always felt hey, like hey, hey, your, energies, holy grail. Eh? Are, your energies are so in sync. The synergy like is Like sometimes amazing. when you're together, yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know who's who. Like Nakwa <laughs> one. You know, when it comes yeah. to songwriting, when Yo. it comes to smoking, Banta. <laughs> to ah, writing la, 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 la. and banter and everything. Yeah. So tell me about that. Like I've always felt like that's, you that's, two are like, Siamese twins. That, that's like a big brother that that I never thought I had, I, I never thought I needed. Aww. And I found, I, I found him and, uh, Mimi and I had to keep it on. From those days when, uh, you remember when we were pushing Lucy and favorite song? Yes. I used, Bian used to take me to all the interviews. I wanted to himself. say that. And yeah. he would sit next to yeah. you while you were talking. Bass. And sometimes he would, you know, come in and say something. Bass, but bass, he was bass. like your sidekick. Bass, bass. No, 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 in the cars, <laughs> in the car when we were going to the interviews, mm. we used to write all these rumba songs. Like, that's where we wrote uh, Extravaganza, Rumba Japani. Wow. Like, While just driving oh, to an yeah, interview. Driving to an Epic. interview. Epic. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And I, I feel like it's a synergy that has been created by this amazing friendship that we have. Uh... I sometimes we sometimes just hang out for nothing. I need to make it too. <laughs> to Nachoma and banter, uh, researching on whatever we wanna we're gonna find on the internet mm. and just learning and being uh being ourselves, man. Mm. He's a good dude. He's such a good dude. That's uh, nice. Yeah. That's so nice. So, uh, like one of the best musicians Kenya will ever see. Any amazing guy. It's so funny because almost every every episode someone is talking about BN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he Even deserves last it, man. Episode. Hey, he deserves yeah. all his flowers. That's sure. nice. Uh, That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so um I think you mentioned in other interviews that come February 2020 2024 yeah. uh you will not be with Soul Generation yeah, because uh, of I mean, I don't know. Tell yeah, us. It's time. Uh, our contract ends in, in February. And it's a bittersweet kind of situation, you know. Being under Soul Generation has been really amazing. They have really, like, made a monster out of me. Sure. A beautiful monster. face the world. And then also, uh, as much as I, I, want, I want to be independent, I really feel like I was getting, like, so much uh, at, uh, affection and so much... Uh, you know, support from, from, from being with my brothers. Mm. Uh, we're still brothers for sure. It's just that, that the contract with Naisha, uh, and we have so many songs, collaborations that we have to, we have to make sure as in Metoka. Mm. So uh, it's just two entities now. It's going to be like two entities working together. Mm. So the Lion of Suda and Viri Pia Kona Company, School of Heartbreak mm. and Soul Generation. So, so is Niviri also leaving? I am, yeah. I'm not aware of that. Our contract Did... was actually uh, drafted at, at the same time. Mm. And even though I was the first artist to come out, we had already like signed. We signed actually together at the same mm. time. Yeah. So they, they, they end together. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that means but like... But also we are creating space for other musicians because as much as Saudi Soul is going on a hiatus, Soul Generation is their baby and their business. Mm. Uh, so they are also like uh, about to launch new artists mm. uh, that can take over and be great at, at being, their, uh, being themselves and mm. being musicians and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of artists, you know, come here on the podcast and we discuss industry issues, things that work well for them, things that don't work well for them. Yeah. Um, do you feel like since the signing to Soul Gen, you've had a pretty professionally led career? Um, and even outside of that, like, what are some of the great things that have worked for you and yeah. other things you, you feel this industry can get better at? It doesn't have to be necessarily yeah. uh, towards Soul Gen, but I think an important thing that we should always talk about is how to better our industry. Because sure. every day we are talking like, um, why are we where we are? Can we do better? Yes, can yes, we yes, be yes, at yes. par with other industries? Yeah. Uh, I feel like what our industry needs mostly right now at the moment is we have so many different facets in terms of art. There are artists who paint, artists who draw, uh, there are artists who are artists in fashion, yes. fashion designers, yes. uh, and there's musicians, there's actors uh, who, who, who like do the 
film and all that. Yeah. We need to find ways of working together and creating this big synergy because we are all so good at whatever we do, but there's big power when it comes to you uniting and bringing so many things together and making them work. And that's what I, that's what I actually learned in SA. There's so many things that happen when it happens when it comes to the synergy between fashion and music, uh, music and art, music and film, music and music and sports, uh, music and sports, uh, which I, I don't see it happening a lot in in, in Nairobi. Mm. Uh, it's just uh, recently that I started seeing uh, these film uh, creators start using uh, Kenyan music mm. and uh, like uh, finding a producer that can actually curate your film and score for it and make sure that the sounds and everything they are at par with other 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 industries mm. so I feel like that synergy we need to find it we need to find ways of collaborating and bringing everything together and that's how we're gonna build like a very strong industry mm. in the country, I, I love yeah. that yeah. I love that that's very next level because I feel like we need to dismantle the our, our, our definition of an artist. Yeah. I think traditionally speaking, a lot of people think an artist is a musician and a superstar. Nah. But the songwriter is one. Yeah. You know, the, the producer, the bass. director, Imagine. the editor, yes. the digital artist, artist who's creating your poster. That's somebody who's making something really cool for even the other artists. There yeah. is neo synergy that we need for sure. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the artists, the, you yourself can't exist without all those other artists I around can't, you. I can't, I can't. Yeah. Like, even for me, right, right now, actually, I, I had like such a beautiful talk with some guys from Studio 18. Uh, they do fashion uh, streetwear. Oh, they're so uh, cool. They're yeah, uh, Akina yeah. Akiba. Akina Akiba. And they dress me a lot. Most of the time, in the metamorphosized, metamorphosized. I love it. In the later footer. <laughs> I love it. You, you uh, talk about June. <laughs> so uh, we were discussing about uh, fusing music and fashion and having events, having like building a culture mm. with it because music and fashion, they, you, you, they were used to tell like different kind of eras, mm. uh, different times. I feel like as the musician of this generation and the, and the fashion designers of this generation, we need to find a way where we are working together in a way that we're gonna be remembered. Yes. Yeah, something that can 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 create a culture that that that's gonna live years and years. In a, like for example, you see like easy 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 baggy pants. The because in the value are like in the nineties, mm. uh, and they they're coming back yes. right now. So I feel like in this generation that we have right now, we have a good space where we can create something very unique. That that whenever people are trying to remember, hey, yo, era, I can have been so like in a nanny. Mm. There was this fashion, there was this that culture that was going on, yeah, and it still lives on up to now. And that's that's something that we need to work mm. on yeah, as an industry. I love that. Yeah. I think you also talk up uh, talked about um, the lion of Suda also being a father. Yeah. Um, how old is your baby, and uh, how is it to be a dad? Ah, she's eight months right now. Oh. Oh, she's uh, so tiny. Yeah, but hey, the cutest baby I've ever seen. Hey, I who are a friend in eBay bank. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful feeling. Uh, wakes me up with, uh, with some strength to work. Any I'm ready. I'm ready to to follow the grind because thinking that there's a human being that dependent that's dependent on my life. Yes, I have to make sure I wake up and grind and make sure. I become great for her. So uh many party like so much push in my life. Mm. Uh I feel like I've become a better person by just uh being involved with her. Mm. Uh I found myself in a certain way. And then uh, also I've learned how to make better decisions. And it's a beautiful thing being a father. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't complain. It comes with ups and downs, and those are uh, beautiful lessons. Yes. Yeah. Um, have you wrote her songs? I'm a yeah. Witch. Specific oh. songs, even from the new album, have she been inspired had, she, by her. She had to be on the on this first album because this this is the beginning of of Ben Soul being like a boss, you know, a CEO. He or, lion in my, in my of own Suda. Thing. Yeah. And for me, being a father and being a CEO in 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 in, in, in all these things, she had to make she had to be a, a a very big part of it. So I wrote her a song called Melody, uh, on the on the oh. on the album that interlude, and. It's a special, it's a very pure song that just speaks about, it's, it's me speaking to her and telling her that 
I'm going to be there. I'm going to be available. I'm going to be, I'm going to make sure I take care of her. She needs to uh, leave every other thing to me. I, I just want her to be great, you know? So it's me, Trinity. It's me and Trinity to infinity. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> that's dope. That's dope. Thank that's you so dope. much. And um, in this new album, The Lion of Suda, I think Ukona Collaborators Kibao. Wait, oh, wait. my goodness. A good selection. Hey. Uh, so collaborators on the album. Uh, I had to be very specific with them. Although there are some guys who didn't make it on the, on the first album. Uh, I'm hoping they're going to make it on the deluxe. Uh, it was very kind of, uh, every, every song deserved a certain, a certain kind of vibe and I made sure they went after the best. Like for the intro, I decided to go with Wana Vocali because they bring this heavenly kind of vibe to the song. Yes. And whoa, any, on the day when they recorded, I was like, wow, what really beautiful voices. Nice. They've been my friends for a minute. Uh, I, I'm actually the one who actually auditioned them for Toweza as BGVs. And and then uh, after that, after the Toweza uh, that that season, Stint, yeah. they decided to, to to form a group together. Mm. Yeah. So me and Modekai, we actually kind of played a big part in terms in, of in, like in uh, how they uh, came together, uh, coming to That's they're coming amazing. together. Mm. And and so when I I hollered at them, they came through. Uh, I had written the parts, so the, 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 their work was to arrange it and sing it however they wanna sing it. And they made it really heavenly. And then I also had to have my brother, Bien, obviously, because we've written so many songs that <laughs> we had to, like, even fight Nisongani Takujita mm. on the album. And then uh, La Vosti, because I had this, uh, this revolution movement that I wanted to push uh, mm. in terms of legalization of marijuana. Mm. And then uh, somebody like Motaka. When I wrote the, that song, Same Page, it felt like it, it needed, it was like a very beautiful ballad. It felt like it needed like a, a female response. Mm. So Modaka was perfect for it. She used to be, uh, we used to be in Saudi Academy together. And then uh, Zinia Manasse. Hey, Zinia. Zinia I, I is Zinia. Zinia. Annie, Zinia is so amazing when it comes to how she handles herself in the studio, how she records her vocals, how she writes. She really had to be on the album. And then we, when, when we met up, we created such a beautiful jam that there's, there's no other jam could have, like, in Gator. Hmm. And then also, uh, for Ro, it was such a beautiful blessing. That's the last song I ever, I, I did on the album. Mm -hmm. uh, I was calling Mordecai, uh, Watenda Wili, Okelo Max to the studio because I needed them to help me uh, lay BGVs for Navutishwa mm. and me there for 20. And what what in the I think they had a shoot a shoot or something. So it was just me, Mordecai, uh, Okelo Max, and uh, Hendrix, who's like recorded most of the songs, produced most of the songs, mixed and mastered the whole album. Hmm. So Hendrix started making 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 a beat, and we were like, okay, let's write to it. And we ended up ha having such a beautiful song. Ikafukuza song in a kutoka kwa album. Uh, who else? Afronautic. He's been my brother. We've, we've worked on an album together. Uh, hopefully, it atoka after the Metoka Soul Generation, mm. just to kill about like m m most logistics. Yeah. Uh, but this last song, that miracle song, I was like, on the album, the first song was Dreams. Mm. And the last song is Miracles, meaning that God is taking me from my dreams, making them a crazy reality. And in this reality, He's creating miracles. And at the end of the album, any, I'm just saying, man, this album, I don't know how uh, it came it came to be. It's just me putting, uh, collecting amazing energy and putting it together mm. and letting God do the miracle. So, I can quote featured up on your song, Miracle. And then, uh, my my guys from Horn Sphere, they did amazing. Any, hey, they came to the album launch. I was there. It was yeah, amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. And then I also had a chance to work with Juma Jukes when he was yes. around. Big up, big brother. And then uh, I also met up with Bayani. God's plan to cut in a song in Guinea for San Eneto Dundosa. And my brother Savara and Polycap, they were really big parts of, of, of the album in terms of production and in terms of uh, writing it. Uh, and then Chimano was meant to make it on the album. 
Ako ko ako dilax. Ako ko dilax. But everyone who was uh, part of that album, it was very intentional, mm. and they are my people, and that's why those songs. It's so hard to like get rid of them from your mind. Once you start listening to them, it's an album that's you're gonna that you're gonna listen to for the rest of your life for sure. That's you try dope. to make to make the music very timeless when it comes to the writing, when it comes to the vibe. When it comes to how it represents Kenya mm. uh, as a as a as an industry, mm. yeah. that's dope. Yeah. So tell me about four twenty and why is it so <laughs> important to legalize marijuana? Like, yeah. I I have nothing against it, but yeah. because I'm not really smoking it, or when I did, I didn't feel nothing or yeah. anything. Yeah. I don't understand. Can you help me understand this? <laughs> 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 Uh, so uh, oh for me, goodness. actually, I'm not. I'm not even fighting for the recreational one. I'm fighting for the medicinal one because I've seen like so many guys uh, get help helped by marijuana in terms of their recovery. There's some guys with crazy anxiety. It works for that. The CBD oil. I've seen guys with like a crazy skin disease that in Kemeshi that all the dermatologists mm. and that girl a little me uh, that cbd oil also to like to get better mm. uh it's been uh like in a thing and there's so many so many different kind of medicine mm. and also uh when it comes to the economy we're just we're just sleeping on it any trust me uh uganda just legalized yes. like a few a, a few months ago mm. and trust me you're going to see the difference because when when you look at the graph of the marijuana industry where mm-hmm. it's going to it's in the trillions, Jenny. In the trillions. Actually, so I saw there was a show on yeah. Netflix about um, the business of marijuana yeah. and how there's literally cartels because it's Yo, such a it's such a robust industry that we're just sleeping on it. Like we have the best lands. We have we are located at the tropics. So you think we should probably be like if it's legalized, like we should just be farming and selling and yeah, exporting yeah. and importing and. and Yo, that's what Uganda is doing, and it's making a lot of money from it. Eh? I feel like. Do you, Do you sometimes uh, get flack for you know speaking openly about it? Like, do you sometimes you know get maybe media people or yeah. older people telling you stop that or? Once in Awajakoya, once. If they can deal with him, then they can oh come and deal God, with me. Because she sat up there. <laughs> yeah, for me, I'm just I'm just being like uh, an um, uh, not even an, an ambassador. I'm just being a voice mm. to say that. Uh, where most of our youths are un- 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 unemployed, and we're sleeping on a very beautiful industry that could employ most of them. Uh, we a, lo- a lot our, of the parents yeah. watching or older people, not older people, but just people with a different point of view. Watasema itaribu watoto vichwa. Apana, imagine. <laughs> right now, I know even like older people who take CBD oil to sleep because sazingine umeza kumechoka anxiety is 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 to the roof and yeah. you get like this crazy insomnia a few drops of that cbd oil it doesn't like make you feel high it just knocks you out mm. yeah so uh, and then also i've never seen anybody where uh, is that oil where where can we get it uh is it in kenya or in europe there's some guys who are selling it uh from from even from uganda okay yeah uh so i'm saying uh i've never seen anybody go crazy because of weed and it's never been even recorded anyway. Most of the guys when you wana chizingi, it's because of other drugs that Omeshika mm. and And then also weed is a first drug they blame they blame it to. And then also when 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 whoever made weed illegal, they were doing it on political on political terms. Mm. They were trying to oppress the black people. And I feel like most of the countries have discovered that uh, we've just been uh, putting like a blind eye to it mm. and legalizing it has helped so many countries in terms of the economy like look at Canada yani yo tumelalia pesa yetu sisi ni kama msichana akona matako the song writers have started hey. kan kana kwamba <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> so, Ben, so I watched an episode on uh, so, Soul Family, um, your show and that and, and that of Saudi Soul on Showmax. And I remember there was a, a, there was a specific episode 
focusing on you and your mama was there and you guys were talking about um, or rather you were talking about having gotten a lot of support from your mama yeah. and I think there was a story about some, some time when you were sick you had TB yeah. you didn't even think you'd make it out of that situation trust, trust um, was trust. that the one time in your life when you actually you know so kind of darkness yeah that was my rock bottom moment uh, at that time I was staying with my brothers in Kayole uh, had, the, had the band guys uh, we never used to be healthy, first of all. Uh, we never used to eat healthy. Uh, our meals were depending on whatever you have in the pocket on that day. Yeah. Uh, and then I remember, I think I got the TB in those matatus. Because once your, your, your immune system is, is weak. bad, is yeah. weak, you, you, you find yourself uh, in, a in a crazy position where Mtuyote akona TB akwa around wewe. It's so easy to get it. Mm. And yo, oh, that that disease is bad. Is it? Yo, yo, yo. Nili, I, I, I came from being 72 kgs. I went down to like 50 kgs. Wow. So, like my bones were showing. I couldn't even stay. I couldn't even sit on a wooden on a wooden surface. You had to of, lie of down. I had to lie down. I had to sit on very soft things. Uh, like on a mattress or something. Were you eating? To, I was eating. I was like even when but I was in Nairobi. Matter, it didn't matter. It didn't matter that you I, were I, eating. I didn't know. I didn't know what was ha was affecting me. Ah. So I went to all these kind of clinics. I went to Nairobi Hospital. Most of them were were diagnosing me with pneumonia. When you know that bacterial infection. Kumbeni uh, TB. That's when I also broke up with uh, a girl that I really loved. So I just decided to go back home. Uh, my mom saw me akalia and she was like, oh, 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 oh. Uh, she took me to our family doctor and they discovered that I have TB. I had to take meds for six months and eat and rekindle my, 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 my strength and everything. Mm. So I used to stay with my mom for like, I stayed with my mom for like four months, four of the months. I have like all my meals set out for, for the day. Like I used to eat like five meals a day and take like more than seven pills every day for TB. It was a dark time. I had lost my voice. Uh, I couldn't sing. But I feel like I took that moment to write some of my amazing songs. And I discovered that I could like write in different kind of ways at that time because I was writing to give the, to give the songs out. Like, I didn't even know if I was going to regain my voice back. So slowly, slowly, I started healing. I got better. Nikanda Kunona, Nikarudisha Afia. Which songs did you write in that period? Could you, uh, could you remember? I wrote a telenovela, Ntala wow. uh, I wrote each other song at that time. Even Lucy was also a song. A song Really? At, at, at that season, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was actually planning to give it out. And then I decided, ah, these are my songs. God has given me back my voice. Mm. Why not? Let me let me let me kill them with it. Mm. Yeah. Wow. It, it, it means there's there's something. If he let me he, if I survive I, I came out from that situation, it means that he had like a lot more plans for mm. me. And that's why I'm still here. And and your mom must be so proud of, of you, Najua Kutoka. Ah, Wherever you may talk apart yeah. when you call Leo. Ah, she's seen she's seen a lot of different versions of Ben Soleni. The mischievous one, the clever boy who wanted to become an engineer, and to this crazy musician who's uh rocking all the stages. And I believe that she blessed me with she was like, just follow and be who, whoever you wanna be. I'm going to be there right behind you. Mm. And I remember my pastor telling me, telling her that uh, this boy is really clever. I was really clever when it comes to studies and stuff. But when it comes to the music, this is what's going to like catapult him to the best places in the world. The pastor said. Yeah, that's wow. pastor said. It's like he spoke so a blessing to me. So you need premonition. Yeah. Way back when I was quite young. And I believe I've lived with that word in my heart for a minute. And I I kept on believing in it. Mm. So when even when I was quitting civil engineering, that's what actually made me, like, gave me conviction that it's going to happen in a good way. Mm. And it doesn't matter however 
and where I am right now, if I become diligent at it and put my heart into it, mm. God is gonna give back. Yeah. And and which part of your craft do you enjoy the most? Because there's the songwriting, there's the uh, playing specific instruments yeah. and playing together with bands. Yeah. There's the singing, um, there's the performances, yeah. and not just at home, but all over yeah. the world. Yes, yes, yes. What yes. is it that when you're doing, you just Yo. feel like, whoa, I'm on top of the world? Performance, for sure. You know, that's when you you have the complete product and you're expressing it to the people. And you and, see and, and, how they And you see the, how they're responding yeah. to it back. And you see how they've, like, uh, like listened to the songs and learned them. And, and, this, and, them and, this, and the songs have become part of their lives. Yes. Yo, there's nothing that beats that. Like yeah. this stage high that's better than any drug high. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love that. And which were your favorite shows ever? Or, uh, or what shows do you remember? Like, wow, I was so touched. Yeah. Uh, my, 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 my groundbreaking uh, performance that, that actually made me, made me emotional it was the previous Soul Fest. There were so many things that were happening at that night that I ended up performing as the last act. And it was at 5 a.m. in the morning. I got on stage thinking guys would have left. But <laughs> Nilip on the stage and there was like more than 7,000 people waiting for me. I was like, wow. So they didn't leave, actually. They didn't leave, yeah. Like, wow. Made me, made me emotional, for sure. Did when you I, cry? I, when I went back back backstage, I was like, "Wow, that's that was really beautiful." Mm. Shed a tear just a bit. Yeah, that's so special. Yeah, and and that's what actually made, pushed me to even put uh, have my own event uh, at the Alchemist for twenty. And I actually did it with Stephanie, who's right there. We didn't even do it with Soul shout Gener out to Stephanie, I, who I also made this interview happen. Yeah, I didn't do it with Soul <laughs> Generation. She yeah. actually ran all the logistics, made sure the event. Went smoothly mm. and we broke even. She did, even. A, we she broke did an even. excellent job. You all did such Yo, an excellent so job. Much. Actually, so I remember much. when I came, I was like, What? When I came, there was like a long queue. Yo, I don't you know. know. And I was like, Wow, beautiful. So like, if you guys are ready for Ben Soul concerts, uh, get we ready are now. Ready. It's going to be ready. amazing. And, and since the album came, and, and then also another beautiful feeling about it on, on, that, on that day was I got on stage. And I was singing songs from the album, and I could see guys singing them. And the and album had just been released like, 24 hours. On the hours same day. Yeah. That day. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> wow. My fans are the greatest. And I'm super grateful to everybody that turned up on that day and supported me. Like, yo, man, I wouldn't be here without you guys. Mm. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So before we wrap up, I, I think I've, I've expressed just how much uh, of. A, a multi-talented artist you are, you know, such a great songwriter. We've spoken about uh, various artists who you've written with and for. I, I just wonder, like, for somebody like you, who are your artists? Like, the, who do you who listen to? Me. Who is inspiring you? Because you are the <laughs> one who is inspiring yeah. so many others or writing for them or being part of their successful projects. I listen to so many artists and there are so many artists actually who inspire me uh, all over the world. Uh, I would say somebody like Chronix, uh, he inspired me when it uh, when it comes to performance and stuff. Uh, when he came here and performed, uh, that that show was so spiritual. It took me like a whole month to recover from it. Uh, I got really inspired by that. Uh, there's somebody like uh, Labyrinth, who's uh, who's calls for for films, uh, produces, writes amazing songs, and an overall amazing musician mm. and then there is uh our crazy guy Kanye West yo that guy is a genius how he knows how to put up like to 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 collect different energies different people different artists different kind of uh styles and put them in an amazing project that's what inspired the lion of suda mm. uh I would say somebody like uh Bruno Mars a, a beautiful performer amazing songwriter multi-instrumentalist also uh, yeah yeah and then also my my, my brother bn man like he's he's <laughs> inspired me in so many ways shout out to him and zayani how many from there so many things mm. Mm. so you know moving forward into february into your own independence how do you feel about being in the industry like do you feel supercharged are there any reservations um you know 
what else would you like to do for yourself and for the industry? Uh, well, right now, as of the moment, I'm trying to uh, put up, like, make sure my company now is, uh, is a household name that people can be referencing uh, whenever, like, for example, when you're talking about soul generation, you're talking about Yeah. Uh, but everything happens in time. You know, Rome and, wasn't, and your, wasn't... And your company is Suda Entertainment. The Lion of Suda. The Lion of Suda yeah. Entertainment. The, it's just the Lion of Suda because it's going to be covering so many... It's just many the different, Lion of Suda. Yeah. Okay. So Mjue, many different Mjue. things. <laughs> yeah. And then also, uh, I'm planning like a lot of albums, a lot of different kind of projects that are coming after these uh, different kind of shows. So uh, expect like the Lion of Suda Festival... The, the, on, on for, the, the one that I did on 420, that was the first edition. Mm. So expect that every single year uh, and different kind of events, fashion and music events, uh, one-man shows, mm. stand-ups, because mm. I discovered that I was a check out expect more of Manchis Monday and so many different kind of uh, collaborations with different artists in Nairobi. Uh, as, as, and for artists, I mean all of them, fashion designers, uh, film scorers, uh, artists who draw, uh, everything, mm. everything, everything. Uh, mm. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to be that gap. In your, the things that I've spoken to you, when you, we need to do as an industry, I'm trying to do them for, for myself and my friends and be a good example mm. uh, to, to the rest of the guys. Yeah. yeah. You, you're one example of, um, you know, a patient artist, a hardworking artist, um, a art, an artist who pays his dues and, you know, you know, is patient enough to wait to, for the success. Because a lot of people come in and they expect like one media tour, yeah. Utakuwa na hit song, I'm a, after being signed, you, I have to blow in one year, but you've been very consistent and very yeah. patient at your own journey. So, um, you know, for those who are listening, what kind of advice would you give to an artist who is just about to come out or wants to come out and is looking at Ben Soul, like, I want to be like Ben Soul, but what yeah. they need to understand, Ben Soul did, did not become Lion of Suda, Sikumoja. Yeah. Sikumoja. You know, you had... Yeah. You know, quarantines, medicine, EP, so and so things. many other yeah. hit songs yeah. and records and collabs before you felt like this is my time, you know, to launch my album and to yeah. uh, start my company. Yeah. So and there's steps to the journey. What kind of advice would you give them? Uh, the, 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 the most important advice that I would give any artist who's starting up and anybody who's trying to be something big, uh, anybody, anybody who's trying to be big, uh, create value to yourself, you know? Like, work on yourself every single day. If it's that instrument, learn it. If you, uh, if, if you want to learn production, learn it. Uh, like, make sure everything that you really wanted, like the picture that you have of you 10 years to come, the greater you, the superstar you, make sure everything that you, you see that superstar needs to be for me or boxes. Mm -hmm. Any, sometimes... Learning all these these instruments, writing a song every single day, uh, learning how to produce myself, uh, learning how to handle a business. Is only to create and it takes time. Rome wasn't built in one day, so follow through. It comes with ups and downs. Those are beautiful lessons that need to cut to, to go into the music, like. Pour your heart into the songs. Be true to yourself. Yeah, mm. and God blesses that. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I just want to thank you so much thank you for so much. being you. Asante. For always being so true and, um, you know, humble and just nice to me and to everyone around um, around you and yeah. just a nice person, being a period. Good human being, yeah. You know, so, like, I remember the Ben Soul I met in 2019 before we released your debut single, like, it's the same band, so yeah. it's just a grown, yeah. you know, individual. For it's sure. it's a more established artist, but the heart and soul is it's still the same. The same, yeah. and I love that you you so kept um, it so authentic, and I pray that you know nothing takes that away from you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. thank you thank for you being for yourself. Your blessings to me. I receive all your flowers. You deserve all of them. <laughs> You've raised so many artists, and. I, I'm sure in, in my books, 
Umeandikwa hapo na capital letters. Gosh, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. I'm I'm trying to teach myself to to listen to that because um I, it's, it's just I'm just not used to it and it just feels a certain way when people are talking about you. So I'm always like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> But now I'm trying to just, yeah. you know, receive, receive the flowers. Them. Yeah, receive them. So yeah. I, I appreciate you. Thank you yeah. so much. Me too. Thank my, you so my much. My friends are going to, I know Smiles is like falling right now. She would ah. love to be seated here. Mwah, smiles, I'm going to say that. Our pilots. <laughs> it's so amazing to be in this position you know to be able to talk to you and yeah. i know a lot of people want this opportunity but they don't get it that's why we have this podcast vip access yes. that brings you um access to your favorite artists you know you get to hear their stories behind the scenes we wish you well everybody listening please go on and tune um it's not tune in but go on and stream ben soul's album and all the other um discography that is out there and you can also follow him on social media yeah. to know what's happening with the tours the travels his company entertainment yeah. those who want songs come on to hit songs But, do you offer do you just pay him have and, him write you a song and all the guys like who are doing uh all these kind of different art i'm so open to collaborate i'm so open to uh pick your brains and create something that's very all round you know mm. and reach so, out to him reach out he's man, very yeah. approachable yeah i love to the guys who are not in Nairobi we're also bringing the lion of suda shows to you to a town next to you mm. so watch out for that there's a kenyan tour happening real soon for me and viri ante sana thank you all for watching this was vip access with our special guest this week ben so please come back next week we'll have yet another beautiful surprise for you yes, sir. ciao VIP access, VIP access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.